Welcome back, YouTube. Um, or I should say, hello, YouTube. <laughs> anyway, uh, so today's tutorial is going to be on the swing in the graphic user interface uh, and file I.O. Uh, what you're going to find is going to be extremely easy. And I've put together a little project to kind of demonstrate this. And it is based upon an assignment that I have for my object oriented in Java class. It is assignment number four. And uh, just to preview what we're building here, uh, so you know uh, what the final product actually looks like. In this lab, uh, we're required to program with Swing and with File I.O. And your application will be a graphical user interface. The GUI is going to look like this. Instead of, well, I could have it say My Text Editor, I guess. Um, in fact, yeah, I'll have it say My Text Editor on the menu line. And then um, we'll have a file menu and a style. I'm going to show you the file menu and the file I.O. You're going to implement the style. Uh, I'm not going to take that part, so I can't do the entire assignment for you. Uh, so I'll leave that to you to implement. But I'll show you how to set the window up, how to create the project, and how to create the file menu, which should be adequate enough to get you started. So in this GUI, it contains several components, and the components are going to be a text area, or J text area component, which is going to hold the text, or the contents of the file that we're going to open. We're going to have a J menu bar that uh, contains J menu components, or items, menu items. In fact, that's our menu bar. In our J menu component, uh, we're going to have one that's labeled file, and that's the one I'm going to show you. And file is going to have an open, a save as, and an exit option here. In fact, here it is in the window here. Open, save as, and exit. So we're, this is what we're going to build. Um, and so, um, in fact, I have it built already. I'm just going to go through and demo it for you and show you the, the, the different parts. Um, so that was number one, actually. Number two says a J menu component that is labeled style. Let's forget that. That's this option here. If you're taking this class, you're going to implement this on your own. Uh, so let's skip number two. So what are you required? So you're required to achieve the following tasks uh, with these components. If you click on File Open, uh, you should be able to uh, open a file window as described below. And now uh, your interface is going to look different depending upon the platform. I'm going to actually show this to you on a Mac. Uh, so it's going to look a little bit different than this. In fact, this is an old screenshot, I believe, of a Windows system. Uh, so depending upon the uh, operating system you're on, the Java uh, classes that are going to be used, you're going to get a slightly different interface to it. You can open a file with either a double click on the file itself or by clicking the open button on the bottom. Uh, we'll see how that works. And uh, only the contents of the plain file is required to be shown correctly. If the file doesn't exist, you can double click on a file name. It won't, oh, it won't have this problem. Uh, hopefully it won't be opening up. Uh, show a message box indicating that there's an error. Uh, yada yada. I didn't implement any uh, error handling, actually. Um, the design of this open, this window, isn't your job. Um, it's already done for you. So we're going to create a new instance of an object, J file choose of this particular jfile choose class and you'll see how easy that is. So if you go over to this API, this address here is probably for an older API. Uh, so go to whatsoever is current or actually just do an internet search on jfile choose and you'll get a bunch of information on that. And then you can check out what functions, what fields the class provides. Um, so uh, what you need to figure out is basically how to use it, how to select it, how to open it and um, and basically it refers to the J option panel class as a message box. So uh, let's take a look here. Um, in the file save, so that the J file choose is gonna have you open up a file and uh, you're gonna you're gonna basically take the contents of the file and load it up into a text area that's gonna be in the pane. So um, so you have to basically figure out how to read its contents into the text area and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so in the second part is the file save as. So you should be able to open a file window as uh, below here. Eh, it's pretty easy. After you double click on the file name, uh, you click on save as, and uh, you're going to go through the functionality to save as. So as a hint, as in uh, same as task number one, the uh, window is also manipulated by the file chooser class. So the file chooser class is going to give us the file open and the file save. If you click on file exit, your text editor will close and then uh, you know the program stops. So you should be able to uh, change the font size, style, background color of the text area, 
that is your functionality to implement. It's really not that hard. And then submit your source code files uh, if you're turning this assignment in. That is pretty much all of assignment number four. And uh, let's go take a look here um, at about the implementation. Uh, so we have our uh, we have our assignment number four here. It's all in called Java. Java Pad is how I called it. Let me run it. Uh, first, so you can kind of see what we're what we're building here, and uh, actually, I was going to change the name of it. Uh, what was it going to be called? My text editor or something? Uh, right now, the the menu says uh, Java Pad on it. Um, and let's just call it My Text Editor. Um, here, let me make a slight change to it right now. Actually, My Text Editor. There we go. Now, true to true to example here. Save. If um, let me just start out by running it so I can you can see what the end product looks like. And uh, so I just uh, selected to run it. And uh, let me uh, show you what happens. We have this little screen that comes up. It says my text editor. So if I were to close everything else on the screen here, um, I forget which operating system I'm on. Uh, what I end up with is this my text editor and my text editor has an open a save and an exit obviously you're losing you don't have the one that says style next to it uh, but you'll see where that came from and uh, this is a Mac system so we have it up here um, just ignore that actually we don't really need that at all if we do an about we're gonna get what's called the serial number that's set by default and I called the project um, Java pad uh, so that's why that shows there, but uh, I'll show you a little bit about the serial number. Um, we don't really need to worry about that anyway, um, but we have some information we can automatically put in there. Um, so here's our, our functionality. This is actually a text box in here. So if I go file open, I get a, a little open dialog box. Now it looks different than the screenshot, obviously, uh, because it's on a Mac system. If I select a text file, this one here, and we can log is from my data mining course, uh, that's a text file. And I'm going to select uh, OK. And then now I have, uh, we have a GUI chooser remain. Uh, we have all the stuff written in here. This, this came from the text file. This is the text file. Actually, uh, the wiki program that created this log was written in Java, and it has a bunch of Java stuff on it. Uh, but don't worry about the contents. What it's showing is it loaded the file into the window. And if I select save, um, it's going to ask me, you know, where do I want to save it? Um, actually, here, let's, let's do something interesting. Let's take and delete the, uh, the contents of the file. And I'm going to say, this is my new file. And then I'm going to put my name on the bottom of it. Oops, let me capitalize my name. Typing is not my best uh, feature. So I'm going gonna, gonna to save it now. And I'm going to save it as a uh, new file.txt and I'm going to stick it uh, let's stick it on Behacker because that's what it looks like if there's something coming up here so let's say Behacker so now if I uh, open uh, well here let, let's just uh, clear this out so you don't see it and there's no clear button here so I have to do this manually it's not like a real text editor I guess uh, open uh, so we have nothing in the window now and so now if I open it, I see uh, my new text file right here is uh, created today. And I go open. Oh, there it is. There's my file. This is my new text file. So you can kind of see the functionality actually works. I have a text editor. It doesn't really have that many features. This is some new stuff that I've added. And yeah, I can play around with this for a while. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it. So it's going to ask me for a file name. So I'm going to say save it. Uh, save it. I could put it in a new folder. I could create a new folder. But... Essentially, that's the functionality um, that we're uh, concerned with creating. Uh, so let's see how we create it. Um, and um, kind of sloppy, but this is pretty much a small program, and I put it all into one file, and I called it Java Pad. And uh, here it is, actually. Um, we're importing uh, the import um, abstract window toolkit. We're also using Swing. We're using the toolkit for the event, actually, for the event processing, and we're also using Java I.O. because we have file I.O. to worry about. That's where the file chooser and stuff's going to come from. Um, this here is a message warning. If I pull it out, we still have the same functionality, but I get some interesting, I get some interesting under underlines here. And if I look at this, it's going to add, it's going to say serialable class. It's not serializable. It's not serialable with a version number or anything like that. 
Um, this is strictly an eclipse thing. I'm going to undo the typing. I'm going to leave that out so it makes it a little easier for... We don't have to worry about all the... And those are just warning messages. They're not error messages. Um, but uh, I'll save that serializable concept for another lecture. Uh, so, anyway, if we weren't using Java... If we weren't using Eclipse, we wouldn't see that at all. I'm not going to see that in NetBeans. Probably not going to see that in a text file if we just use the notepad. Uh, but I like Eclipse, so we're going to use that one. All right, so let's uh, zoom in a little bit and get going here. Um, so we've got our proper includes for our swing, our abstract toolkit, our I.O. And uh, what do I have here? This is how we're creating the frame that shows up. I know, it seems kind of, uh, it seems kind of easy, and it is. We have public class Java pad that extends JFrame. It could extend applet, it could extend object. If it's extending an object, it's just a class. We don't usually put that in. But if we extend JFrame, we're building off of the JFrame concept. So we get everything that JFrame includes, which is that little window that comes up, that frame. Um, and so that basically creates our window right there. Um, so instead of a console-based application, what we've now created was a Windows application. And uh, this works, I'm, I know I'm demoing it on a Mac system, but it works on a Windows system just the same way. Um, in fact, the, the, the screen and the frame will look like a Windows uh, motif kind of looking window rather than a, a Mac one. Uh, that's a, one of the beauties of um, object-oriented programming with Java is we do have that true cross-platform compatibility. It uses the Windows style of the host operating system that you're running it on and you've compiled it for. All right, so um, here um, we've got the window. Now we need to add some components to it. We have two main components that we're looking at here the J text area, but we're going to call it the edit area. So we're making an instance of the uh, J text editor, which is coming out of the swing, and uh, we saw that in the assignment description actually. And we're also taking and using a J file chooser. File chooser is equal to new J files. We're making a new instance of that object as well. And these are private data members of the JPAD class, and we have uh, put them up front here. Uh, and we're going to manipulate these with the methods that we're going to create. So just like any other Java program that you've created, it's following the same fashion or same same pattern. So the data members are private, the data members are the text area, and the file chooser. Uh, and the file chooser is giving us that functionality. We're making an instance of that class file chooser. That's going to allow us to open, close, save, rename, a whole bunch of stuff. If you go online and take a look, there's a lot more functionality than just opening and saving. Now we're going to create the actions for the menu items or for the buttons. And uh, this is coming from an action class. And so the actions um, are coming up here in terms of the events that we're looking at. And uh, so we have private action, open action, save action, and exit action. Those are the actions on our menu. And so we're really creating actions. Uh, think of them as menu items. Um, and think of them as new instances. So we have a new instance as open, save, and exit. And for these actions, right here, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have in our classes. Here we have the class public class. We'll probably leave off public, but uh, we have open action that extends abstract action, and we have save action that's gonna give us our functionality for saving. And we have exit. So those are our three actions. We put them on the bottom, kind of say, and this kind of, you'll, you'll, kind of standard format. You'll see it done this way a lot. Um, to have everything defined up front, because then you can find it. You know, you think, what's the open action called? You know, oh, it's open action. You know, and you can kind of look for it up here, and you can kind of see it. There's our main. <laughs> this is why I put it all in one file. Outside of the actions, uh, the classes that do the action, the open, save, and exit. We have main. Main make, it just makes a new instance. We have a new JPAD. We have a new instance of a JPAD created. That's all main's doing. So it can just reside in here for the purposes of this small example. Um, so inside of the uh, JPAD class, this is where we're at now. We extend a JFrame. Let's add some constructors. Um, here's a constructor that just creates a JPAD. In fact, that's what we're doing. We're not we're not passing it any information. We could actually we could open up a window already populated with some information. Uh, maybe a file um, and already do some stuff to it and then we would create another constructor for that. 
So just like we create an a constructor for other types of classes that we make instances of, we're doing the same thing here. Um, so we have J Java pad. So we create a scrollable text area here. So we have a edit area, which is going to be equal to a new J text a uh, J text area, part of the swing component, and you see it in here. Java X swing comes from this, and if we leave this out, we end up with an error message because these are the swing components that the assignment wants you to implement. So we have our text area, and this is our edit area um, that we're looking at in terms of our Java text editor. Te Java, we created the object here, edit area up here, this component that we're using, and we're going to say create a new text area 15 by 80. This is the height and the width of the uh, the area that we're creating. 80 lines wide, and just remember this is the height and width. You can always look it up as well. And we're going to set the border. We're using a border factory create empty border. That's the rim, the border around it, and we're going to set the fonts for it. Um, and you can you can actually kind of look up the JTEX area and see what kind of methods. These are all methods that we're calling um, on this object of JTEX area that's giving us the functionality to set it scrollable. This puts the scroll bars on there and the ones on the side so we can go up and down if we scroll past a page and stuff like that. Um, so this is all the information related to the uh, scrollable text area and then now we're going to create a component pane. We're going to set the layout and add the components to the uh, to the layout. So J panel and uh, this is where that lecture, uh, the I/O and the swing lecture is going to come in handy. We have kind of a hierarchy of, of things that we we look at, and we have the content of the J panel. So we can create a panel, put a uh, put a, a set a layout, and then add things to the layout. And uh, the layout is going to give us whether everything is left centered right, is it um, oriented towards the top, the bottom, the left or right. It gives us our look and feel. And this is probably the most difficult part of doing um, any type of GUI uh, programming with Java is that it's kind of like, you know, put it on there and see what it looks like and then change it. Um, so and we have different layouts um, that we can work with. And I'm not going to show you all of the different layouts or all of the different options you have. That's something where you're probably going to want to go online and take a look at it. But here, we can create a content pane here, set the layout and add some components to it and kind of a, for the purposes of this little window that we're creating. And now uh, we're using JPanel. Content is new JPanel. And then we're setting the uh, we're setting the layout to the border layout. And that's part of JPanel content. So we can see what um, we we can see from our content object, we can set the layout and then we can add, we're adding a scrollable text. And we're putting it in the center. We could put this text, in fact, we could put this, and this is the box here that we're putting in the layout that we're putting in the center. And this is the text box, the scrollable text that is essentially going to be showing the file that we've opened up in our text area. Um, so play around with the different layouts and go online, look, look up the set layout and see what all the different options are. And you can kind of see, or go through the lecture, and you kind of see what you've got. And there's like three or four of them. There's not too many to pick from. And it's kind of, um, eh, I wouldn't call it a hack, but it's sort of like you have to kind of place them together. And this is where some of the GUI tools um, that come in with the Swing development, there's some third-party add-on uh, packages for Java that help you. I mean, you can drag and drop stuff on a canvas, and it'll create the Java code for you, and you know, automatically set the borders and set the scroll, and you know, and it's a it's a kind of an easier way of doing this, but you don't have as much control over, it and it takes creates twice as much code as you really need. Um, if, so if you get familiar and comfortable with just creating the objects and nesting the objects, I mean, you know, you're gonna have a container. Inside the container you're going to have other objects that are nested that are going to show the components that you're looking at. So, Alright, so uh, that's pretty much all I can pretty much tell you in advice in, in terms of creating the content. Uh, creating the menu bar is a little easier, actually. We just create a menu bar and then we take the menu bar and we put a title on it. It's going to call File. Um, so on our menu bar we've got a new J menu bar um, as the assignment description uh, requested you to create and uh, we're going to add it here and we're adding a new one a new item it's called file 
So you're going to add another one, and it's going to be called fonts, or style, I think is what the next one is. And we set a mnemonic to F. Uh, in the old days, you used to be able to press, like, you know, control F, or keyboard items to, you know, press F, and it opens up the file menu. And when we, if I can remember, when I pull that GUI back up at the end, I'll see if it works. Um, and it's like a hotkey uh, sort of thing. And, and then we're also going to add, we're going to add some menus to it. We're going to add... Uh, open. These are the these are the options that are going to appear in file. We're adding open action, save action, exit, and we're putting a little separator in here. It has that little line that appears between. Uh, usually they separate the exit. They put it on the bottom so you can find it. So we put a little separator line in there too. And you know, obviously you can look up the menu, um, the the J menu bar, and all of the different options for all the different methods because we're creating a menu bar. And uh, in there, we're adding a file menu. Uh, so the menu bar that add file menu or it's like J menu file. So you can you know figure out what the outside of add you know there's really you know put a separator in there. There's really nothing more to it. Then we set the window context and the menu. So we set the context pane to the to the context, which is our uh, our essentially our focus is going to be the uh, the file that we've got open. And then we set the menu bar. And we're basically just Adding aisle, adding items to a canvas and then setting and making them visible. And then we can set some window characteristics. And this is where I added the my text editor for the title. So we set the title. We can set the default close operation, you know, exit on close for the J-frame. So like if we click on that little button on the top to close it, it'll exit. Uh, we pack it all together. Uh, we put, you know, we basically create the um, we create the window in terms of its components. We set the location relative eh, to nothing. Set visible to true. We can make the wiz you know we can make the window invisible, visible. It's a way to hide and show something. And uh, when we set to the null, we're not really setting the location. Um, you know, we're just kind of just we could set the location. We could put it like a, on the lower side of the window. We could set it up on the higher. This is setting the location right now as I'm moving my mouse around. Um, okay. And then uh, that's pretty much the, the functionality of the text editor window. As we move down through the code, we have our three um, classes left. We could put these classes in a separate file. Only problem is we're, we're really talking about the menu that we've created that we've already put in this JFrame. So um, in terms of our open action, um, what we're looking at here is uh, calling super open in terms of setting it as our action because uh, we're using built-in functionality and now we're putting the value on integer zeros we have a placeholder we don't have anything open yet so we're gonna have it select a file um, and so our our basic value for the open is zero as a starting point um, for, in terms of the action um, so in terms of what we have here is the constructor for the open action and then this I, I've clearly marked it here as an action that's being performed and now what we've got is kind of an event listener this is a true event uh, driven application development or true event driven behavior because we're waiting to click on that until something happens until we move the mouse over there and said file open nothing's going to happen so on the action performed we've selected it then our file chooser File chooser is which we've already created this object. We're going to retrieve. Well, what what do we have? We're going to show the open dialog, and uh, it's going to show on the Java pad window. And uh, you know, just in the application itself, we're going to bring up this open dialog box. And then, uh, you know, it, either we're going to approve something, we're going to click on something, and this is uh, essentially you just run the same code every time you open up a uh, open up dialog reader, essentially, and. Um, you're going to return the value. Basically, you're looking for an error code. Um, in, in terms of your file chooser, it's going to be, um, you know, did you select something? If you did, then, you know, file F is going to file chooser. Select file. So you're going to get the selected file, and then you're going to run a basic I.O., and you're going to catch the I.O. exception on it. Um, in fact, I, uh, I'm going to talk about I.O. exceptions in one of my weekly class lectures uh, coming up very soon. Uh, but what we have going on here is a file reader uh, object that we're going to create. We're going to open up the new file. 
You can kind of, in the old days, they used to call these um, file pointers. You know, you kind of point it to a file. This is like a C++ term. It's really the same thing. It's just implemented in objects and methods in Java. We have like this pointer, and the file chooser is taking the file and pointing it to F as the file name. And rather than using the name of the file, this represents the file we're trying to open. We create a new file reader to read in the contents of the file, given this pointer to this file that we've selected in the get selected file. And then we have the editor, the text area where we're going to load the file into. Well, then we're just going to do it like it's 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 almost like built-in I/O. I mean, it is built-in I/O, and the action to read, and then you know use. Use the, t the text component to read in the file, load it in the text editor. Then we're going to do some, you know, really easy. This try catch is part of the exception handling that's built in, and we're going to try and uh, catch an I/O exception. And the I/O exception is going to basically we're just going to print it out to the screen, and then we're going to exit because if we can't open the file, we're going to close the program down and just exit out completely, um, and then try something. You know, have the user open it up back up again and try again. Um, so that's, you know, outside of uh, finding the file using the file chooser, which is what we're doing here, the action performed is to find a file, attempt to open the file, do some I.O. correction on it just in case the file doesn't exist, load the file. If the file does load correctly, uh, load it up into the edit area, read it into the edit area. Once it's in the edit area, it's sort of like in buffered space, and it just sits there. We can do whatever we want to it. And... Um, the other action that we're going to kind of look at here again is the save action. So when we save it, it's also extending the abstract action. Um, and this is going back up here. This is what we're looking at in terms of our actions. We have the open, the save, and the exit, uh, which are kind of you know, instances of actions that we've created, uh, part of the behavior of the action listener. Um, they used to call it actually the abstract toolkit. At, called it an action listener, now it's an ab abstract action. Uh, the listener part we don't really need to worry about. When the button gets gets created, uh, the mnemonic key that we're looking at is the S. When the button gets created, and we, when, we, when we run that, the constructor is going to say, well, you know, run the super constructor for it, which we don't even know, but it's save. Um, you know, it would be to run it if we were actually constructing it, uh, which we are doing actually when we're loading up the frame. Uh, so anyway, the action performed for this um, is, you know, going to look very similar <laughs> to the open. Um, so the uh, the action is performed to uh, to open it is uh, pretty much the same. Uh, we're running the same kind of methods. We're going to, you know, pick you know, where is the file that we're going to save it to, choose it. And if it's an approved option, then uh, write it. So instead of file reader, we're doing file writer. We have now a writer object that we're sending this pointer to F, which is the file that the file chooser has selected. And then the edit area dot write file write. You know, so basically we're going to use the text component to write essentially. And uh, it's just a method built in. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We don't actually have to write anything. We don't have to read anything. We just use the functionality that's already in the file chooser, uh, which is this object that does everything for us in terms of file I.O. And then uh, our try and catch is part of our exception handling. Throw up a little dialog box that says, you know, hey, error. Show the message in the, uh, you know, maybe the file doesn't exist, the disk drive is full, something happens. Whenever we do file I.O., we always do file exceptions, I.O. exceptions, uh, because it's built in. We might as well take advantage of it. And then, uh, you know, there might be an issue if the file doesn't read right or the file doesn't save right, the application's not going to run correctly. Uh, and uh, last but not least, we have our exit option. Uh, we don't have to do anything for the space bar, you know, for the separator bar. That's already does just functionality in the menu. But underneath that we have that exit action. In the exit action, the constructor is going to run exit, uh, which is going to be sent as the command. The mnemonic is going to be X, and uh, we'll experiment with that when I bring it when I bring it up again. And uh, the action performed is going to be a system exit. Not too bad. Um, looking for the action event E in the event, uh, true, ob true event driven kind of format, and uh, performs that event um, in this particular method evokes, 
and the method says, uh, you know, on this action performed, when we've captured the event, exit. And then close it out. So it's, it's very trivial, actually. So I'll, uh, let me make this a little smaller, actually, so you can kind of see it a little bit. And um, hopefully it's not too small. Let me make it a little bigger here. I'll start from the top, and I'll scroll down slowly. So if you're watching this video and you're trying to... Uh, copy uh, or duplicate this text you can see what it is that you need to duplicate to start a file with our includes uh, and then we have our class java pad that extends jframe and inside we're going to set our components we're going to have our constructor um, i believe here's our main method that we put in here uh, pause the video copy this down if that's what you're doing uh, we've created our text area we've loaded the text area into the uh, layout along with the menu that we're adding to it and we're adding the options on the menu and uh, those options have some actions that are going to be performed when the menu options are selected uh, and those classes are here the classes are going to open uh, open a file and here's the behavior for the file chooser on that we're going to save we're going to have an action to save uh, the file information again using the file chooser and just do a, a Google search on file chooser and you'll see all the methods and everything that's associated with that behavior uh, which is, is actually pretty cool it's all built in for us and then we have at the bottom our exit action which extends the action listener um, to action uh, for e the exit option that's selected from the menu um, so if we, uh, I'll just save it just in case I, uh, hopefully I didn't create any typos or anything with that. No, nope, no, nope, we're good. We're good. And then if I run it, and uh, this is using uh, Eclipse. If I uh, click on it here, I've just got to scroll down to the bottom to run as. I could probably save a configuration. We are running it as an application. It does not get run as an applet. This is not an applet. It's actually an application because we're using the swing components and we're extending JFrame. If we were creating an applet, we would be extending applet, and that's more internet-related development versus uh, versus uh, um, you know regular application development. Here's my text editor. If I select, that's a Control F. I'm trying to see what that new mod. Ah, there it is. It is uh, in, on my keyboard's alternate F that did it. So what what I'm doing here is testing out the mnemonics. Uh, the uh, in fact, uh, you know, for uh, for the menu. So I'm not going to use the mouse right now. In fact, if I press uh, the alternate or the option on my Mac keyboard, I see F. I can use the arrows to come down. Or if I press uh, the option button and S, um, I see the underline appear on the option button. Um, it's kind of the old-fashioned, you know, like before when they had, you know, before Windows first started, we had. Uh, I thought it was. I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was control, but it looks like alternate now. Um, I wonder if the control does the same thing. No, it's the alternate key on my uh, Mac keyboard. It says alternate, and then it says option underneath it. If you see what that action's going on here, I've set those mnemonics in here in the source code itself. Uh, we'll come here. Here it is for F for the file menu. That's what's making that file give you that kind of underscore kind of look to it. Uh, where is my JPad here it is. Uh, I didn't set an icon for it, so it's just showing up. Uh, but that option here, the F, is being, and if I press alternate F, I get the menu, and I can say alternate X. It's going to close. Oops. You'd think it would close. Oh, no, you know what? I have to uh, press X. Oh, X closed it. Okay. And because I put X on the uh, mnemonic, set the mnemonic for the uh, for the closure of the window down here on the bottom. I set it to be X. And I, actually, it's not a, oh, a upper, uppercase X. It's any X at all um, works for that. So I hope you have enjoyed uh, this little tutorial. And now you're armed and dangerous. You can create all sorts of windows. You can actually um, you know, put output in the windows by writing it to the text area. So you can kind of... Now move away from DOS-based or command line uh, graphics and go into a GUI, um, kind of a plain old GUI window and put your output into the window if you wanted to. And you can also experiment a little bit. Um, this is not a full graphics programming course that I'm teaching. It's object-oriented programming. And, uh, and the demonstration here is for simply for purposes to introduce you to the I.O. of opening and closing files uh, with the file chooser object 
and how you can create objects as in text area objects and menu objects uh, to complete your object oriented kind of um, exposure and then you know obviously looking at, at, at the J frame in terms of that window that shows up. Now other um, object oriented languages like C++ that, that are going to use Microsoft Visual Studio um, or the .NET platform, um, they're going to have what's called the Microsoft Foundation classes, the MFC, that it's going to have its own definition for Windows, uh, Microsoft Windows, uh, for the window, for the frame, for the things. And, and then you get different, slight different appearances on the program. So sometimes when you, when you load up some uh, Java programs, you see, oh, it looks like Java. You know, it has that old style window on it, maybe because it's using the AWT uh, toolkit. Um, you know, or, or maybe it's using Swing, or maybe it's using something that looks like that window that just came up. And you can change the color of the window, the size of the border, the types of buttons that appear. In fact, I can't remember right now what buttons are on there. In fact, that's a good, 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 good thing to kind of close with. Let's take a look to see. Uh, actually, real quick here, let me just see. Uh, do I even have an exit? Do I even have, like, the boxes and stuff? What does this window look like? Uh, Oh, okay, so the yeah the window has a regular old motif. So if I you know this is that button that says you know if I close it the default behavior is gonna it's gonna close my editor. But uh, so here you have it the uh, the text editor that looks very sophisticated. Um, it looks like uh, it looks like it's a lot of work. There's all right my file permanently got stored there, and uh, it looks like a looks like a pretty complicated project. But as you've just seen, it's pretty simple actually. Um, all the functionality is built in for you with that file chooser for the open and save. And you know, the second part of it is just to add that styles, and the styles is going to change this style. It's going to change the font a little bit. And you'll see how easy that actually is. It's very extremely easy. So there should be no problems with anyone completing that. Um, so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and uh, stay tuned for the next video on a different topic entirely.